if you came here to have a bunch of points like swirl around each other like it's some sort of fluid and there's vortices and blah 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 you came to the right place but there is a cost to getting this very cool effect and that is a lot of confusion a lot of math and a lot of confusion the idea of this tutorial is going to be called curl so what you're going to be learning is curl get ready to learn curl this video is sponsored by squarespace and we're going to talk about that later i want you to imagine we have a grid of points which we know how to make i'm going to make a grid right here so let's say we have a hundred by a hundred points that's ten thousand these in themselves need to be points not vertices as part of a geometry and i want you to imagine that i take these points and i want to move them on every single frame the way i would approach that is i would add a simulation zone that update can be moving the points so let's set position by some offset which i'm going to use a noise texture for turn off normalize when i do that ugh, it's crazy we do the next logical thing we take this we scale it such that maybe it's only moving one percent as strong as it was and ugh, you're gonna see there's all of this bunching and that is gonna be the thing we are combating here so the points they swirl kind of but they eventually over time kind of go into these lines this cluster over here for example is going to shrink to a single point over time there's some areas that are repelling so if i look at this area over here it just kind of expands outwards and this is what we call sinks which means points moving into an area and sources or emitters points moving far away from it to get a curl field everything moving around each other we need to take the divergence which is saying is there a sink is there a source and we need to get rid of it this tutorial is about that how do we get rid of divergence so that everything swirls it avoids each other rather than shrinking or emitting expanding i want you to imagine we have a vector field v and so in this case we used v as like a noise texture and that in itself is composed of a x component y component and z component what i want to do is i want to create something called a curl field which is this yikes this notation what it means is we are calculating the curl this kind of like swirly thing we're trying to achieve of v it's actually the determinant of a matrix with derivatives and components and i want you to ignore that this can be simplified to a very much more simple version it looks longer but it is simpler so again the curl of a field is now composed of three components an x component a y component and a z component so for the x component for example all we have to do is we take our vector field v we isolate the z component and i check how does that change as y changes i take that i subtract it from the y component and i ask how does that change relative to z and, and don't get me wrong i understand this is confusing if you're confused this isn't like an advanced khan academy video remember our goal is to take a bunch of points on a 2d plane and swirl them around each other it is constricted to a two-dimensional thing which means we can take our curl and assume that the output needs to also be two-dimensional which is a major saving if we only want a x and a y component what that means is that the curl has to have a z component over here of zero that way there's only an x and a y and one very simple way to do that is we assume that the y component of our vector field and the x component of our vector field are always zero that way the derivative is zero and it subtracts out to be zero we get rid of all this we also look at this y component section over here we see there's a x component over here we can get rid of that and we see a y component over here and we can get rid of all of that super super long story short if we pick a vector field v that could be a noise whatever such that it only has a z component no x or y we can easily take this magical curl thing and it'll be equal to something very simple okay now let's get to stuff we kind of understand geo nodes land we need to first of all have a noise that only has a z component as we talked about so i'm going to take a noise texture node super simple and i want this to only have a z component so i'm going to take the color which has x y z red green blue and i'm going to multiply it by zero zero one so in other words this takes in a position and it will send it to something with only a z component now because we're going to be using this all the time i'm going to turn this into a node group yes we can use the new bundles and closures but let's keep it not having another complex thing Control g to make it a node group it's going to output this vector over here and by the way i'm using 5.0 which is why it has this nice new design maybe let's just call it v super simple in other words we have achieved this beautiful remember the next thing we need to do is compute the curl of this special case and we know all we need to do is take the derivative of this with respect to y with respect to x and then for some reason make the x negative so how do we take the derivative of this with respect to y well i want you to imagine this represents our vector field it's dark in some places it's bright in others so for example let's say we're sampling at this point here to kind of get the slope or the derivative of it all i need to do is kind of nudge it a little bit in this direction i evaluate it so now i have 
our initial point and one where I moved it a little, that's going to have some difference. And then I divide it by this gap over here. If you think of this as kind of like a landscape that goes up and down as I sample position along the Y, if I want to know the derivative right here, which is going to tell us the slope, right? Like, is that going downhill or uphill? The way we approximate this, because we don't know it exactly, I look at this point over here. I sample one really, really close. I look at their difference in value, how much it went up or down. I then look at how much of a nudge I did, and then you divide the two. That will give you the slope of a line that will very, very well approximate that uh, derivative. And we can do that on X and on Y. Easy money. I'm going to take this. I'm going to duplicate it. This one, instead of having the position, I'm going to nudge it a little on the X. So I am going to add a very tiny number, like 0 0.001. So this V is the vector field. And then this V over here represents the vector field when we nudged it a little bit. We now take the difference. How much did it change? Which is going to be some value. And then we divide by how much did we move, which will give us that nice slope. What do we divide by? We divide by however much we shifted it. So in this case, it's 0 0.001. And this output over here is the derivative with respect to x. We are done. So let's get the one with respect to y. It's just a simple, right? So I'm going to take another one of these over here. I'm going to, again, nudge the position, but this time just moving it a little on the y-axis and set this to zero. And to get the derivative with respect to y, we take our original vector field. We subtract by what happened when we nudged it just a little on the y-axis. And then finally, we divide by how much of a gap we moved by. Now let's do our victory lap. I'm going to take all of this and turn it into a node group. I want to know the x derivative and the y derivative of our vector field that only has a z component. It's fine. And we can call this new node group maybe our derivatives. The nice thing about this, and this is kind of like how closures work, but we're not going to do that yet, is if I go into my vector field v, I can change the noise however much I want, and it's going to update these derivatives. I guess one modification I want to make is remember our vector field, whatever it may be, only has a z component, which means when we subtract by stuff and divide by stuff, it's going to be something, but it's still only going to be a z component. Maybe I can just separate x, y, z, giving this z component, because that's all we care about ultimately. And then I'm going to take these and turn them into floats, so that we're saying, I already isolated the z component. Okay, beautiful. We're ready to construct the curl field. The sponsor of this video is Squarespace, and that's actually on the mind for me, because over the last week, I've been doing a overhaul redesign of my website, cgmatter.com, so that it's better for members and has, like, free nodes now. It also has a blog that talks about how I worked for Corridor Digital for like two weeks if you want to read that. And that redesign process was super easy to do because of Squarespace's features and just UI. Some things to know is that they have a payment platform integrated right into the service. So if you have a digital product or a member site, you don't need to outsource payment. It can all be done in one convenient place. And then for assets being images, videos, whatever it might be, Squarespace comes with an asset library. So you can, again, put it all in one place. Thirdly, if you're writing, I, I guess it depends on you. But for example, if I'm writing documentation, Squarespace has integrated AI that can fill in the details that I know what is correct and then I can quickly verify. You can just head over to Squarespace and make a website and when you want to launch it and make it live you can use this link below in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Made it very easy to redesign cgmatter.com. So remember we combine xyz. Let's look at it one more time. So it's the derivative with respect to y and then minus with respect to x. With respect to y, I can really get lost here with all these x's and y's and derivatives but whatever. Minus, so I'm going to multiply apply this by negative one with respect to x. And then remember the z component is zero because all of this is going to be the curl of v. We are done. So let's take all this, make it a node group control g, and I'm going to call all of this curl, which I guess should output the vector. So long, 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 long story short, we have a vector field v and whatever we do to it, however we modify it, which I'm going to disable normalize just so it's like centered, whatever we do to this, change the scale, whatever, we now have a curl field for just x and y. So maybe I'll call it curl xy. And now for the punchline, let's actually move these points and make some kind of artsy art art. What could the art look like? Well, let's start off with a mesh grid. We already demoed this, so let's do 200 by 200. These need to be points, not vertices in a mesh. So I'll turn these into points, which we can make much smaller so we can see them. So just tiny radius. I think something like this is much nicer to uh, look at. So I have my points and what do I want to do with them? I want to push them over time with a simulation zone. So just like before, before, we have a simulation zone, we feed in the points, move those points on every single frame by what quantity, like how am I offsetting it, by our curl xy, and this in itself will swirl, but it's going to be chaotic, like boom, I don't know if you can even see that. 
Probably not. It just kind of exploded. It is working. It's just really, really strong. We can scale it, in other words, make it smaller by either a really tiny number like 0.01, which in itself is still way too fast, or we can use delta time and multiply it by something up to you. I'm going to do 0.001. And even that's pretty fast moving. You can see it's starting to curl, but it still looks like it has that divergence. So let's make it even 10 times slower, see what that looks like. And now I think you're starting to see it. Points aren't really bunching together or expanding, but rather they are swirling around each other in this way that preserves, I don't know, preserves density in a way. There's zero divergence. The only thing that's kind of weird is we have some water, if you want to think about it that way, exiting the square system we started off with. Instead of 200 by 200, let's do 400 by 400. And now you can really start seeing that swirl. Look at that. So here you have like a, vor a vortex of vortice, and it's really moving like water where everything pushes everything else instead of uh, those sinks we talked about. Yeah, outside of it, you can see some nice like swirls forming and stuff like that. And remember, um, because we constructed it the way we did, all of this can be modified by just changing the uh, vector field so we can have it move differently. So if I choose a scale of 15, it's still going to work, but now we have a bunch of tiny vortices that all kind of curl on each other. But note that because there's now more micro detail, those derivatives need to be more accurate. So inside of our curl, I'm going to go inside of our derivatives and maybe make this 0 .000, 000, 0.001 number 10 times smaller. Gets a, a really good approximation here. So we change that, which means we also have to change these numbers over here. And we can mitigate that even more by taking how much it moves and scaling it down. Now, uh, you're going to notice that while this works, we're going to get to the point where it's moving really, really slowly, which needs to be done to preserve the accuracy. But I want it to visually be faster. What if we take super small steps? like we are doing right now, but we do multiple steps every frame. In other words, we're turning steps into substeps. Wouldn't that be nifty? Well, it would be nifty, so let's actually do that. Throw in a repeat zone inside of here. So for every frame, every simulation frame, I'm going to do an operation multiple times. Specifically, it's going to be the set position offsetting. The only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to make the step size super small because we can afford to now. For now, we're doing one iteration. It's going to be accurate, but so, so slow. So let's do five iterations per frame. It's going to preserve that accuracy, but now on every frame it's going to move more, but at the cost of more computation. It's at this point that we probably want to bake our simulation instead of kind of going frame by frame. So simulation nodes hit uh, bake, and we'll let that do its thing. And just like that, we get a very accurate curl field where there's very, very minimal divergence. There's these nice swirls over here. And then what you do with it is the artistic part. I just wanted to talk about the technical part because, geez, it's complicated. And if we want to eventually make a fluid simulator, which we do, because of the new grid 3D stuff, we're going to have to be using this curl. So turning this into a node group is critical. Before signing off here, let's take advantage of the fact that we have an algorithm, a recipe, to take any vector field and make it a curl field. So let's take the noise and maybe replace it with something. I wonder what a wave texture would look like. And, uh, I mean, technically, that's kind of interesting. If it's kind of going on a wave, the only way to avoid compression is by going outward. So notice these points are still flowing around each other. Let's do one that looks better, though. Well, we have our magic texture which has more interesting like two-dimensional stuff going on so i'm just going to connect that here increase the depth and nice divergence free flow while still kind of maintaining the shape of it and it makes these cool like bands over here this would be a good time to use the voronoi texture not the color or the position because those are just constant values per cell then maybe the distance would look good interesting so now you have this flow that's kind of constrained to the cells, which means it would kind of have to swirl to avoid divergence. Very interesting. You ready for a super cool one? So here I did my sine waves through X and Y and added them together. So the only way it can I avoid divergence is by making all of these whirlpools. I mean, come on. That's super cool. What happens if I make one of them a tangent? I don't even know. Okay, new patterns unlocked. So what did we learn today? What's the takeaway of all this? Well, we learned that avoiding divergence, like where noise shrinks or compresses or whatever, is really hard to do. Or one obvious way to do it is to take the curl of a field because that ensures that it has no divergence. I'm sure there's other ways to generate them. Moving around points is actually kind of the obvious way to visualize it, but you could totally like do anything with it. You can move around strings. You can use it as a rule for how much to extrude things, whatever. So the project files of the renders you see are going to be available on cgmatter.com for members. Blend files at cgmatter.com. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.